Hey there, and welcome back to RimWorld. My name is Pete, and today we complete another episode of our RimWorld series with the Cult of Jinx. Technically already in spring, but visually and temperature-wise still very much in the middle of winter, we rejoin the colony of Liviana after a successful last episode of 2021, in which we converted Thoraya to our ideology and had Coco prove her allegiance by acquiring a masterwork great bow from the Empire. Today we want to actually recruit Thoraya so that she becomes a full member of Liviana, and we also have a few other things planned, among them the construction of a new base, the first outlines of which can already be seen here. However, to be able to build something, we need to clear out some trees first, so for the next few hours Coco will be busy digging and replanting, which does in fact also increase her already pretty good plant skill of 11. Maniac, meanwhile, finally completes our first research project. Tree sowing was already unlocked because of our tree connection meme, and so we are now finally able to sew ourselves some proper clothing. A bit late, perhaps, as winter is almost over, but at least we are now prepared for the next one. Now, the next two projects will be stone cutting and complex furniture. I think those two are obvious choices. And with the construction of a new base coming up, let's unlock stone cutting first, which should not take quite as long as complex clothing. And with that, the sun is already slowly setting again over our frozen swamp, as our building site is still being cleared. Nonetheless, the day does become eventful after all, as Thoraya attempts a prison break. Despite already being converted to the Cult of Jinx, it seems like she has had enough of her captivity, but of course we did not go through all of this trouble to simply let her escape. And while I think that Maniac, with his melee skill of 14, could handle a fully naked Thoraya in a one-on-one -on -one fight, let's stack the odds in our favor and engage her with everyone we have. That way we can hopefully cut the fight short and avoid serious injuries, at least for our colonists. Thoraya, meanwhile, receives more than a fair share of cracks and bruises, while Maniac comes away a little less mangled and Spex's injuries are barely worth mentioning. She is also the one to now administer some first aid, using plenty of herbal medicine, as Thoraya's recruitment might not take that much longer, and a new growing season is also right around the corner, so we'll be able to harvest more in a few days. For now, the night sets in, Maniac gets some medical care as well, and eventually everyone heads off to bed. On the next morning, as we take a look at the blueprint for our first proper building, our two woodmaker dryads Kipsor and Mixi produce another batch of wood. And yes, I did some digging regarding their production output, and from what I can tell, it does indeed seem to be a feature of the tree connection meme and not a bug. So we will get double the wood production from our dryads, currently 64 units of wood every day, enough to slowly but steadily build up a small tribal settlement. And after reading through your comments on the last episode, I saw a huge number of people in favor of building something a little more organic, a small village perhaps, but certainly not one huge megastructure base, and I will definitely try to go more into that direction. After all, the cold bog does not offer that much building space anyway, so going with lots of smaller buildings makes some sense from more than just an aesthetical point of view. Construction does take some time though, and ideally I would like to have Thoraya take care of it to avoid wasting resources, as she has by far the highest construction skill of everyone in the colony. For now though, she remains steadfast, her resistance is slowly but steadily being reduced, but at least for the time being she is unwilling to join us. And so, Spax and Maniacs spend another evening in meditation, while Coco already delivers more wood to the building site. In the middle of the night then, an elk self-tames, but don't get your hopes up, I'm afraid we don't want to raise it like we did with our Muffalo Shadow Mage. Instead, Maniac can quickly kill it for some much needed meat. Spex meanwhile has begun the construction process, but she is still botching a good amount of attempts, so I would much rather have her focus her efforts on recruiting Thoraya. However, with 1.5 points of resistance still remaining, it will likely take two or three more attempts until she is willing to even talk about joining us. And so, after quickly putting up a roof, Spex continues to try her best while Maniac is busy at the research bench and Coco cooks some elk meat. During the evening's meditation then, we once again reach 20 patches of anima grass, meaning that we can conduct another linking ritual. 
We currently have the option to either give Maniac his first Psychic ability, or to rank up Svex to a level 2 Psychaster, which I think is what we will go with, but not right now. Instead, one last chat between her and Thoraya finally results in Thoraya's resistance being broken, meaning that only now can we start to actually recruit her. That is far from guaranteed either though, so it might take a few more attempts. On the next morning, we then receive a quest that could be of interest, as two refugees are approaching Liviana, begging for our permission to stay with us for two weeks. Just like with Thoraya, they might end up joining us for good, either on their own accord or by other means, leave again after 14 days or even betray us, so I would like to hear what you think we should do. Taking in two more people could be a worthwhile addition to the colony, especially with summer coming up, but I also don't want the colony to grow too quickly and this might also introduce even more ideology problems, as the two of them are likely not believers in the cult of Jinx. So let me know whether or not we should accept them into our colony, and if so, what our intentions could be. Speaking of accepting someone into the colony, as if she had finally given up, Thoraya's first recruitment attempt is already a success, and with that she rejoins Liviana for good. Our colony is now one fully naked pawn richer, and I'm sure that we'll be able to put her to good use. For now though, Coco celebrates the occasion by throwing a party, and indeed, I think this is cause for a celebration. After the festivities have ended, however, Thoraya returns back to her bedroll. She still has plenty of injuries to recover from and also cannot stay out in the cold for too long anyway, so we might as well go easy on her for another day or so. And since Spex is also not really putting on a display of expertise craftsmanship while constructing our new village, let us instead link her to the anima tree once more. We will not have anyone else participate in the ritual though, as it takes quite some time, and we can regrow the anima grass much faster afterwards. The next Psy rank is guaranteed either way, no matter how poor the ritual quality. A few hours later then, the procedure is completed and Spex gains the next rank as a Psycaster. She automatically receives a new ability to go with it, water skip in this case, not the most useful in a fight, but considering that we are building our base mainly from wood, the ability to instantly soak a small area in water could have its uses if enemies decide to set some buildings on fire. Now before our colonists go to bed, Spex, Maniac and Coco can sneak up on a sleeping caribou, an animal that can attack back if we harm it, so I think it's best if we approach in numbers. Just in that moment, we also have some space junk fall onto the map. But right now we have better things to do, so let's watch the hunt. And well, the outcome really isn't too much of a surprise. Slowed down by Spex's burden ability, the caribou has no chance of escaping, and as a result goes down quickly. Very early in the next morning then, Thoraya's injuries have healed and she immediately goes back to work. Her construction skill of 7 gains some valuable experience points here, as the first building of our new settlement rapidly approaches its completion. Her work is cut short by the still less than cozy temperatures though, and so the first signs of hypothermia force her back inside and in front of the research table. Still, she should be useful here as well, her intellectual skill of 5 is also the highest in the colony, so outside or inside, Thoraya will be handy to have around. Having now joined both the Cult of Jinx as well as Liviana, Thoraya also informs us that she would like to change her look. This is a new feature in the ideology expansion, allowing colonists to use the styling station to change their hair or beard or to even dye their clothes. Now at the moment we don't have a styling station, so Thoraya's mood will take a slight hit, but we could build one at any moment as it isn't locked behind the complex furniture research, and with the new base already under construction it shouldn't be long until we can fulfill her wish. Until then, Spax and Maniac can hunt another elk, an endeavor that is quickly completed with success, and having warmed up a bit, Thoraya can do some more construction work. 
At this point, I can perhaps also show you the terrain that we are working with. The red here is deep swamp that we cannot build on at all. The yellow only holds light structures made from woods, but no wooden floors. And we also have to keep the anima tree in mind, which we cannot, or rather should not, build anything too close to. So the small wall to the right of our first house here, that is as close as we can go without affecting the tree's psychic recharging abilities. And because we are making good progress and finish our first building before nightfall, we can also already queue up the second one. After all, we need to house four colonists and each one will get their own room. Late in the evening then we have a steel meteorite crash down pretty close to our base, right as Specs creates another solar pinhole to keep the Raya warm. But steel isn't really needed at the moment, so we can simply send everyone back to bed. On the next morning, more trees are being moved to make way for a field that we will eventually place here as well, and Muffalo Shadow Mage is also ready to be shorn again, producing another 120 units of warm Muffalo wool. Our second building, meanwhile, is coming along nicely and is almost finished as another caribou finds its way across the river and into our base. Spax and Maniac are ready their bows immediately, but this time the animal strikes back. Still injured by the arrows and further slowed down with Spax's burden, we have an easy time outmaneuvering it. A slight carelessness here though causes Maniac to get needlessly hit, but shortly after the caribou goes down. Interestingly enough then, fresh out of prison, Thoraya also attempts to convert Coco to the Cult of Jinx, but is only able to slightly reduce Coco's beliefs. Still, it's nice to see that our conversion attempts have apparently left a lasting impression. Maniac's injury meanwhile is quickly treated, and after the caribou has been butchered, it is now time for another ritual. With three members in the Cult of Jinx, we can now appoint a tree speaker, a moral guide if you will, who, among other things, has the ability to convert people without having to imprison them first. Needless to say, we are giving this role to Spex herself, but make no mistake about it, there is also a different role for the leader of our ideology that we have not yet given to anyone. Obviously, Spex would be the ideal candidate, but for the moment she is the only one with a somewhat acceptable social skill, so we are making her our tree speaker for now, and the colony remains without a true leader for the time being. Now, very importantly, this also increases Spex's expectations by two levels, from very low to moderate, effectively reducing her mood by 12 points. So from now on, we'll need to find other ways to keep her happy. A new home, for example, could be one of them. Right away then, we are trying our new conversion powers on Coco, with mixed success. The attempt itself does upset Coco, but we still achieve a 19 point certainty reduction. The ability is now also on a 3 day cooldown, so we can't spam this too often, meaning that if we just want to convert someone as quickly as possible, imprisoning them might still be the fastest way to do so, depending of course on the converter's social skill. But we want Coco to continue to contribute to the colony, and her ideology does not cause us too many problems, so I think we can afford to take this slowly. Before our colonists head off to bed, we are now moving everyone into their new homes for the first time, with Specs, of course receiving the slightly larger chambers in the building on the right, while everyone else gets a small 3x2 room. To keep our colonists comfortable, Spex can now also go around and heat up the rooms with her solar pinhole, except for Coco's, who likes the dark and should have enough protective clothing to keep herself warm. However, their sleep is quickly interrupted by the appearance of a grizzly bear, a source of meat and bear skin that we will not pass up. So Spex, Maniac and Coco can once again sneak up on the animal, Unsurprisingly though, their first shots sent the bear into a frenzied rage. This time we are a bit more careful though and use the river to further slow the animal down, and so a few seconds later Maniac can put it out of its misery. The following day begins with the removal of yet a few more trees, as it is time to construct building number 3. A lonely elk passing by briefly diverts Maniac's attention elsewhere, however his shooting skills put a swift end to the encounter. 
With the next batch of wood produced by our dryads, we can then start the construction of what is going to be a small common room, with adjacent rooms also already planned for butchering and some food storage. Around noon, Specs and Maniac can hunt even more elk, and you have probably noticed it already. The snow is gone as well, the cold bog is once again looking lush and green. Spring is finally here. A few hours later, we can haul a few more bits and pieces over to our new village. The research bench, the crafting of Cambia and the campfire move into our new common house. The butcher table remains outside for now though, to keep things clean. We are also going with an animal flap instead of a door for the entrance to the building, simply to change things up a bit and because it nicely fits the overall tribal aesthetic. As Coco then tries her hands at hunting an elk, an arctic wolf starts attacking. Apparently it had chosen the elk as its dinner and isn't overly amused by our attempt to take that away. Spex and Maniac are quick on the scene though and together our colonists manage to hunt the wolf down. The elk hasn't moved too far away either, so a few more shots and another animal is added to our steadily increasing stockpile. At this point, temperatures have finally also reached a point where we can sow out new plants, so while Maniac butchers the bear, Thoraya can start growing our next rice harvest. During the night, we then receive unfortunate news, Muffalo Shadow Mage has come down with the plague. And while the disease is not as deadly for animals as it is for humans, we still want to act quickly. Therefore, Spex rushes over to administer some herbal medicine, while Thoraya constructs a comfortable animal bed, which will increase the rate at which Shadow Mage gains immunity, hopefully enough to keep our animal friend alive. The next morning begins with the arrival of a combat trader caravan, in my opinion still a bit too large to attack though, especially since they're carrying guns, and shortly after that we also receive another quest. Once again the Empire asks for our help, and also once again they promise another masterwork great bow in exchange. All we need to do is to protect a shuttle crash site against a few hostile traps people, a task that shouldn't be too difficult considering the fact that the Empire brings their own soldiers as well, who very likely severely outclass any tribalists the game can generate. Still, for a few more hours we have everyone working on the new village, with Maniac also already serving up the first batch of cooked meat from the new campfire. Since the mission timer is ticking down quickly though, we accept the Imperial Shuttle Crash mission shortly after, in exchange for the second Masterwork Great Bow of the game. The shuttle performs a rough landing a few seconds later, and two Imperial soldiers as well as two civilians exit. The two civilians need to survive to complete the quest, but again I am confident that we don't even need to intervene too heavily here. Back in the base meanwhile, Spex approaches the trade caravan, but partially also due to our lack of funds we can only sell them a mangled shortbow. And even if we had the silver, I would still be a bit hesitant about purchasing some high-grade firepower at this point, simply because I really like the simpler aesthetic that we currently have going on. I'll talk a bit more about that at the end of the video, during our usual fan art showcase, but for now we have some action to get to. The tribes people are here, there are six of them, not too well equipped, but also not completely harmless either. Now it takes a few moments until Spex, Maniac and Coco reach the shuttle, during which the Imperial soldiers already engage the enemies. And admittedly they are doing pretty well for themselves and so we manage to arrive before anyone goes down. Still there is no need to jump into the thick of it right away, we'll let the much more heavily armed troops do that, while our colonists stay in the back and in cover and snipe away at our foes. Most of them still have their backs turned on us, so especially Spex and Maniac, who are pretty decent shots at this point, have an easy time landing hits, and so it does not come as too much of a surprise that after a short fight our enemies decide to flee. On their way out, the last few stragglers are killed and so none of them survive the attack, which means we can help ourselves to a good amount of their pemmican to bolster our food supply. In the evening then, the Imperial troops enter the rescue shuttle and leave again, and we receive our second Masterwork Great Bow for our help. 
This one will be equipped by specs, so that her and Maniac now both have one, allowing her to also pass her normal quality bow down to Coco. Thoraya, meanwhile, remains naked and armed with only a knife, a situation that we probably need to take care of soon if we want her to be useful in combat, but at the moment her shooting skills do not really warrant putting a bow in her hands at all. So instead, we put them all in her bedroom. Yes, we are currently lacking a proper storage facility in our new village and probably need one or two more wood drops in order to construct one. This situation is definitely not helped by the onset of a foggy rain, so I would say we have our work cut out for us for the next episode. For today, I think we have reached a good point to make the cut, so let's wrap things up right here and jump into the first fan art showcase of 2022. And while we enjoy the amazing creations of this wonderful community, let me briefly talk a bit more about the plans going forward. Some of you mentioned in the comments of the last episode that they would really like to see a tree-shaped base, and I absolutely loved that idea, but unfortunately the swampy terrain is likely going to make it impossible to really incorporate such an intricate design into our construction process. Still, what you have seen today is of course only the beginning, and I also don't plan on clustering all of our buildings this close together, so there will be plenty of space for trees in between to keep everyone happy, and to also hide behind in case of an attack. Having our village located next to the river is a neat aesthetic as well, I think, not to mention that it also gives us a bit of a natural barrier to hide behind, while any enemies approaching us will take quite some time to cross the water. Eventually, though, we will probably have to expand to the other side of the river as well, as I don't plan on keeping the Cult of Jinx this small for long. On that note, don't forget to let me know what you think about that refugee quest. We still have a few days to complete that, should we want to. I would also be very interested to hear what you think about how long we should keep things Neolithic, so how long we should continue to fight with bows as ranged weapons and stay away from electricity or any other kind of advanced technology. Right now, I admittedly really like it this way, and two masterwork great bows are certainly making life easier, but I have a feeling that our bows might eventually hit a limit. So let me know what you would consider a good point to make a change, and for how long you would like us to keep going like this. At this point, also a big thank you to all of the artists who contributed to today's episode. As always, I am delighted every time I receive one of your creations, which you are always free to send me via email to pete at petecomplete.com, just to keep the artwork uncompressed. With that being said, let's now make the cut for today. As always, I hope you enjoyed the episode, and if you did, then I would be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then you can go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so already, grab some merch over on shop.petecomplete.com, or check out and maybe even pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.